atoms in Elixir are constants where the name is the value. If we open up the terminal and get the Elixir shell up and running, if we do something like colon my underscore atom, that's an atom for you. Atoms start with a colon. So colon hello is an atom, colon variable underscore one is an atom, and colon var at two is an atom. All these are atoms. Atoms compare based on their names. So if we did colon apple is less than colon banana, it's going to be true because it is evaluating them alphabetically by its name. If you remember, I mentioned in the Boolean video that true, false, and nil are all actually atoms. So if we do true equals the atom true, it's true. If we do false equals the atom false, that is true. And then if we do nil equals the atom nil, all three of them are true. Atoms are super handy as keys and maps and keyword lists. And a map is when you have the percentage and then the curly braces. So then you have a key in here. So a very common thing you'll see, and we're getting into maps very shortly, like in a couple videos, but like status is a key inside this map. And then okay would be a response and okay is an atom. So they can be used inside of maps. And then we also have keyword lists, which we're, which we're getting into in the next video or so. And it's the same thing. It looks very similar to a map, but it's within square brackets like a list. So we could have a key like error and then the response of not found. And so not found is an atom and so is the key. And so there you go. Atoms are used as keys and they can also be used as values inside of both maps and keyword lists. Atoms are used in pattern matching and as module names. So remember, atoms are not garbage collected. That means once atoms are created, they stick around. So be careful with dynamically creating atoms like using string to atom and then some dynamic value. So if we did something like string dot to atom and then we pass in, um, this is a string and hit enter. Now that is an atom. So you don't wanna have your code randomly generating these things. And so we can also convert strings to atoms as well. Or I mean, um, atoms to strings. So if we did atom dot to underscore string and we can say this is an atom it'll be returned as a string atoms are efficient for pattern matching and comparison because they are internally represented by unique integers comparing two atoms is super quick because atoms are stored in the erlang's vm's global atom table so mapping atom names to unique integer identifiers. The atom table has a fixed size limit though. It's often around 1 million atoms. This limit helps prevent the VM from getting overwhelmed. Atoms take up a set amount of memory in the atom table and they're not garbage collected. So their memory is uh, pretty predictable. But with that being said, remember, be cautious with creating atoms dynamically. It can fill up the table very quickly and potentially crash the VM. So avoid converting random strings to atoms. The atom table keeps both the integer and string representation of atoms. And this is handy for printing and converting back and forth from strings to atoms. Like everything in Elixir, atoms are immutable. So once you make it, it doesn't change. And that is, that's about it for atoms. They pop up everywhere from map keys to module names. Just remember to use them smartly, especially when thinking about memory and performance. I'll see you in the next video.